The next presenter is uh, Max XX from Harvard School of Public Health, and he will uh, speak about the Botswana trial. Uh, thank you. Um, this trial is funded through PEPFAR and OGAC in much the same way as PopArt, administered uh, by the CDC rather than the NIH. Uh, we call it the Botswana Combination Prevention Program. Victor de Gretola at Harvard is a, a co-PI with me. Um, as you know, Botswana is one of the countries with very high prevalence of HIV, um, along with Swaziland and Lesotho and South Africa and a number of others. It's right down here in the bottom of Southern Africa where the epidemic is most severe. And the hypothesis of this study, like most combination prevention studies, is to bring together both those interventions that have some degree of proven efficacy, such as enhanced testing and counseling, PMTCT, male circumcision, and improved linkage to care, along with test and treat. And our variation on the test and treat intervention is to treat specifically on the basis of high viral load above and beyond national standard of care, which currently is 350 CD4 based on the Ministry of Health gui guidelines in the country of Botswana. Um, and I will say a bit more about that. The study is conducted in 13 villages or clusters um, in the statistical designation from three regions all on the southeastern to mid-northeastern region of Botswana. And all villages in the range of about 3,000 people to 12,000 people with a mean of about 6,000 per village. And the village design was selected because of the expectation that a larger fraction of incident infections from people in these somewhat isolated villages will occur from someone else in that village. Um, to match the villages into the two arms of the study for intervention and standard of care, what we have done is to uh, use population, age structure, distance from the urban area in question, and access to health facilities. And it's rolled out in pairs by initially conducting basalt, how, baseline household surveys of 20% of adults, which will then serve as the intervention, as the incidence cohort throughout and randomize each pair in a rollout fashion going from south to north within the country. This is a map of Botswana. As you can see, most of the uh, villages, or really all of the villages, are in pairs designated by color, which you probably can't distinguish too well here, but in the lower right-hand region of the country. And Botswana. Uh, as a country has had a long history of participation in trials, including prevention trials. Two that I've cited here are the famous 052 with Mike Cohen, where we were one of the sites involved in the study. And uh, also of some significance, the ART regimen PMTCT study published in 2010, which showed that you could reduce transmissions to infants, both in utero and through six months of breastfeeding, down to a level of 1% if using heart starting by 20, week 27. Now, because this is a combination prevention uh, study, and the prevention interventions can be categorized in two sort of different categories. We're attempting to do viral genetic linkage with phylogeny of all viral infections. 
in both intervention villages and standard of care villages. And the reason we're doing that is because we know that such prevention interventions as male circumcision or use of condoms or behavior change or those sorts of things will give you equal protection against subsequent exposure, whether you're exposed in your home village or exposed in Johannesburg or New York City. On the other hand, treatment as prevention will only give you prevention through that mechanism in that immediate environment where you're exposed. So if you're doing a randomized study with treatment as prevention in one village and not in the standard of care village, if you're exposed in the standard of care village, that will give you no prevention protection through that mechanism. So what we then attempt to do is determine which of incident infections over the course of the three to four year study came from prevalent infections that were in the same village where the interventions of um, treatment as prevention or other things were or were not done. And then in the, in the evaluation, estimate to what extent incidence was lowered specifically and the fraction of those infections that could be mapped as coming from the village in which you were exposed versus lowering of incidence of all infections. This is an example of how we did this in a pilot sort of study in Machuti, Botswana, which really wasn't the best place to select from the standpoint of the village size and situation. It just happened to be a place where we had resources and funding from the NIH to do such a study. But we could, with just examination of just a third of the adults in this uh, village, in this case of 40,000 people, verify that about a third of the infections that occurred in the village were linked to somebody else in that village. And over the next uh, period of time of examination of a year, we could verify that about seven out of 18, exactly seven out of 18 incident infections, the first ones we observed in the village, came from somebody in that village, whereas we could not verify that the others came from somebody in that village. Now, the other aspect of this trial that's particularly unusual, perhaps, um, is using the criteria of viral load um, as basis for heart intervention for prevention, as opposed to just CD4 count, we'll use the national standard, which is 350. And if we look, the rationale for this is if you look at populations in a cross-sectional way and examine what fraction, this is in Botswana, in a representative place in Botswana, what fraction have high viral load regardless of CD4 and any CD4 count, you see that about 57% at any CD4 count on the background of a place where treatment uptake is very high to begin with, about 57% have viral load above 10,000, a third above 50,000. About 50,000 obviously has a significantly increased risk for transmission. 10,000 does too, but not nearly as high as 50,000. If you just look at those over 350 CD4, it's about 45% over 10,000, 21 or 22% over 50,000. And even where the standards says they probably will move to 500, it's a third over 10,000. So even if standards move to CD4 500, we could imagine that without treating on the basis of high viral load to begin with, we'd be missing about a third of the people that could be involved in significant transmission. And so finally, I would just say that a rationale that, that we believe is appropriate for viral load criteria for treatment as prevention is the fact 
that it will probably be more cost effective because we do know that with high viral load, your time to disease development is, is significantly faster. Therefore, your time um, that you time until you require drugs anyway is much shorter. And you would be, if you went to compare it to a system of treatment for all, for example, you could imagine that there would be quite a few people ranging from elite suppressors on down who would not need drugs for quite a few years. And one could argue that that uh, is a cost that isn't worth investing. One could also argue that it's a risk from the standpoint of long-term possible toxicity with drug effects that isn't necessary. So our logic then is to look at the approach of, of viral load above and beyond uh, criteria of CD4500 cutoff. And this study will take um, three to four years. Um, we're planning to begin in the field in September. And um, it's, as you might expect, a fairly ambitious study. We're hoping for um, high degrees of participation and success. And we'll let you know the results at some time in the future. Thank you. <laughs>